can you talk a little bit more about what is no what is known today and what has been known since SSRIs were originally coming onto the scene about the potential long-term effects of chronic use? So, um, so when, when SSRIs first came onto the scene, there was very little interest. I mean, shockingly, now looking back, very little interest in uh, whether they had any long-term effects. And I think this comes back to this idea that they were reversing an underlying abnormality. That sounds like such a good thing to do that it didn't seem obvious that we should really be, you know, be too worried about any long-term effects. If you, if you think about it, you know, if you don't take that model and if you think about them differently, if you think about them as, as psychoactive drugs, as you described them earlier, which I would, you know, completely go along with that description, they are drugs that change the normal state of the brain and therefore change our normal mental states. If you think about them in that way, then it becomes obvious that we do have to have some concern about what the what the long term, the effects of using them on a daily basis for weeks and months and years might be. Um, and we have good evidence now that they are dependence forming in the same way that benzodiazepines are dependence forming. They they don't cause they don't cause people to get high. Their effects are not particularly pleasant when people take them. Um, so they're different from benzodiazepines and opiates and alcohol in that way, but they are similar in the in the sense that when people try and stop them, they experience physical withdrawal symptoms, physical mm. symptoms, including things like dizziness, nausea, um, but also anxiety, um, hypersensitivity um, to uh, to uh, to sound and other sensations. Typically, these um, uh, with some antidepressants, these electric shock sensations that people get in the brain. And that's also a symptom of benzodiazepine withdrawal. And, mm. and is probably, I would think, uh, an indicate, you, all, all these drugs are probably, um, I mean, benzodiazepines are definitely sedatives. Uh, antidepressants probably also have some sort of restricting effect on nervous nervous activity the activity of the nervous system and these symptoms like um these electric shock symptoms and uh benzodiazepines also cause tinnitus during withdrawal sometimes and as i say you know increased sensitivity to sound mm. all these things i think indicate uh, a brain that is on the rebound from having rebound effect, previously yeah. been suppressed, yes. So, so it's become hypersensitive. You, you've you've suppressed the sensitivity, and 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 antidepressants do that to some extent. We can see that, for example, in the way that they have these sexual side effects. They, these mm. are very well recognised and 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 have been have been acknowledged uh, since they were introduced. They. Um, they cause all sorts of sexual dysfunction, but one of the types of sexual dysfunction is reduced sensitivity, reduced uh, sexual responsiveness, um, which may be linked to these reports that they are have these emotional numbing effects as well. And so I think what's happening when people come off them is you're getting this rebound in sensitivity, this heightened uh, sensitivity or awareness of, of sound and other stimuli. Um, and 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 an emotional ability. People become also sort of more emotional um, than than they were previously when the drugs were suppressing their emotions. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. I mean, there's many many examples of this in biology and in psychopharmacology. You take a drug that has some effect. In this case, something that's dampening, at least to some extent, certain um, types of brain activity. And if you're, you know, if you're dampening what the brain is trying to do, so to speak, then when you release that constraint, there's going to be this, this overshooting or this rebound, um, rebound you know, absolutely. sort of just like uh, uh, pulling a rubber band or something and then, and then yeah. sudden, suddenly letting it go. Yeah. So, so I think that's definitely happening, but I think it's probably not all that is happening. Uh, and, and I've, over the last few years, I've come to appreciate that the, the limitations of what we know about the long-term effects of, of drugs, especially drugs that affect the brain. 
Um, and that's partly because some of the symptoms people get during antidepressant withdrawal uh, are not necessarily related to this rebound effect. Uh, and it's also related to the fact that this, this um, sexual dysfunction effect. So, uh, so as, as I said, sexual dysfunction is well recognized as an acute side effect of taking antidepressants. But it's increasingly being reported that even when people stop taking antidepressants, the sexual dysfunction can continue. And often what continues is um, reduced libido, reduced sensitivity. Uh, and so this suggests that when people stop, sometimes instead of getting a rebound, they're actually getting a continuation of the symptom that they had when they were taking the antidepressants. I see. So another way of saying that is that there are long-term persistent side effects that come yes. that can come from chronic use. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and so these are, there are these persistent sexual side effects and also when people um, withdraw, I mean, you know, I think I think we used to think. Certainly, I had the impression that after people withdrew from a drug, you know, you'd get unpleasant side effects, which might go on for a few weeks, but then they would stop and you'd be back to normal. I think increasingly we're appreciating, certainly with some sorts of drugs, that people don't go back to normal in that sort of time span, and it may take very much longer. And there are these basically persistent withdrawal symptoms that can go on for years in some people, yeah. uh, particularly with antidepressants, but they're also reported with, um, they, they've also been known about for a long time with benzodiazepines. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that also just sets you up for a kind of vicious cycle, because if you have um, negative side effects that are persisting long after you discontinue the use of one drug, you've now got a new set of symptoms that you're going to want to treat. And it's plausible that you're going to try and treat them with other drugs. And you couldn't just kind of like cycle cycle in that way. Yes. And I think this is one of the problems from the fact that antidepressant withdrawal symptoms weren't really widely acknowledged until quite recently. I, I'm sure that there are many people who've tried to come off antidepressants, experienced withdrawal symptoms, and thought that they were having a relapse of their underlying condition, and ended back up back on their antidepressant when maybe they didn't need to, but maybe also ended up back on ended up taking a you know another drug like a so-called mood stabilizer or a benzodiazepine or, or an antipsychotic or something else because of the persistent symptoms they were having and and the fact that anxiety is one of the um one of the main symptoms is obviously going to make that particularly likely and i think the anxiety again is is related to this fact that the drugs are suppressing um nervous activity and so i think the anxiety is a rebound effect um but but obviously especially if people were a bit anxious to begin with they might not have, might not recognize it as that, especially if no one's suggesting it, and might therefore just think they're having a relapse. Yeah, that, that's interesting that, you know, and this this phenomenon comes up in other areas with other drugs as well, where you you form a dependency on a drug, you try to come off of it, the withdrawal symptoms are being mistaken by the person having them as a relapse or something like that. And then that just incentivizes them to stay on the drug. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that, that I'm sure that's been happening a lot. So, I, another, another thing to say about that is um, I, I think <clears throat> I, I also think that people um, I, I think that that people become very worried about stopping taking an antidepressant. I mean, if you've you know, if, if you've taken this drug and you have started to feel better and you think that this is it's the drug that has had this effect and it's the drug that's keeping you well, you can understand that when you start trying to come off the drug, you might become very anxious. And, 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 and if you're getting a few odd symptoms, that might make you even more anxious. So I think there's a psychological component as well to this, which is not, not to say that people are making it up in any way, but just say that, to, to emphasize that people often feel very vulnerable when they're coming off a, a medication uh, and therefore will you know, be even more likely to interpret any symptoms they have as, as a relapse, as a catastrophe, and, and um, therefore think that they need to go back on the medication. Yeah. I mean, if you're taking something for a period of time, 
and you perceive that it has helped you to some extent, and you are considering going off of it, you're, you're naturally going to have some uncertainty or some anxiety about that. And that would, you know, one would expect that that's just going to predispose you to be more sensitive to the withdrawal symptoms you're going to feel, which are itself going to include things like anxiety or just sort of mood instability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, you know, in many cases, the doctors will think this as well. So people will get the same message from their doctor. Okay, or of course, you feel a bit, you, you know, you're not feeling so good. That shows you must be relapsing. 